Aloha, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday service. This is the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, uh, Sunday, sun, sun, seventh Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, welcome to our service again this Sunday. Uh, I'd like to start off with a ministry update on what is going on in our church today. So let me bring that up on our screen. Okay, click on events. Today we have a Bible study uh, at 11 o'clock. We're working through the means of grace. Uh, the, it's a wonderful study uh, that talks about the five means of grace that John West, Wesley instituted. And uh, we're, uh, today we're gonna be talking about fasting, which is something that we're not as used to, um, to engaging in uh, these days. But uh, it's a very interesting talk, um, and so we'll we will uh, follow that. Uh, the, the, it's a video series uh, from a really great uh, theologian named uh, Susan Heath. And she's, uh, she, she, this is a, she does a wonderful job explaining grace today. So if you'd like to participate, you can click on uh, Zoom and join us uh, in our Zoom session at 11 a.m. And you can, you can get there through this page. There's a Zoom link right here. Okay, next. Uh, we have our Tongan Sunday message today at 12:30. Uh, it'll be you can catch you can get to it by clicking on uh, the same link that you clicked to get here, uh, Facebook.com/lahaina/umc/live, uh, or you can click on this link on the in the events tab to join us. Our soup ministry is still going strong every Tuesday and Saturday, and so we uh, our next uh, ministry is on. Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. So if you'd like to come down and, and talk to some folks that come by and, and enjoy soup, uh, we would love to have you down there. It's really get, nice to get to know our neighbors and uh, to talk to. We have regulars that come every week, so I've gotten to know uh, these regulars as they come in to, uh, to enjoy soup. Every Sunday at 5 a.m., uh, our Tongan uh, women get together for a, uh, for a prayer service. And speaking of fasting, one of the things that they've been doing uh, is, you might have heard of this, it's called the Daniel 21 Fast. And they'll be doing this again on August 21st. And it's a 21 day fast where you uh, refrain from eating meat or um, sugar. And uh, I, can, I, I'll, I plan to put the, um, some of the information on our website if you'd like to participate uh, from wherever you are. Uh, and maybe some, I'll put a little note on fasting and, and, and kind of the purpose of that. Um, this fast is, uh, they're praying for our church uh, and for all of you and for all of our families and our communities. Uh, it's a really a powerful um, thing that they're doing. I was able to uh, get together with them after they did the last fast and uh, boy, it was really, a, it was a nice powerful service. So if you'd like to participate, we'll put some information on our website. That'll be starting on the beginning of August. We have a Wednesday night Bible study, although this week we will not be doing uh, the Bible study this week. Um, uh, we're, we're going, to, I'm going to, it's actually my, my anniversary, so I'm going to be taking the day off on that. So we'll be catching up again the following week uh, for the Bible study. So if you'd like to join us you, on the 29th, you can connect uh, by uh, clicking on this Zoom link. And we're working our way through the Gospel of Luke right now. And then after we finish Luke, we're going to do Acts, the book of Acts. So if either of those books, if you'd like to know more about those books and kind of delve into uh, really the great stories, and Luke is a wonderful storyteller. It's one of my favorite gospels, and, and I also really enjoy the book of Acts. So if you'd like to participate in that, you can connect via Zoom, and you can join us. Okay, so make sure the sound here is low. I've, been, I've gotten a message back. Um, so, okay, it looks like I'll just speak louder. <laughs> okay, I'm not looking at the audio input. It's okay, so. All right, next up. Uh, we were planning to have um, an in-person service on August 2nd. Unfortunately, um, the uh, bishop had requested that we put off 
uh, in-person services for a while because of the increase uh, in coronavirus cases in California. Uh, so, on, um, in, and also in, in and also in uh, in in uh, uh, Oahu, uh, the numbers have gone up there pretty quickly. We're for blessed in uh, Maui; they haven't gone up quite as much. Uh, but uh, we have, there's th three Methodist churches here on Maui, um, and so uh, we're uh, so we're we decided to we're going to have to postpone uh, and probably until September. Uh, but keep looking for that date when we have an in-person service. We can have up to ten people in here when we do our live streams. Uh, so if you do, would like to come down, um, let me know, and we'll make sure we have a space for you, uh, because we do have a couple people that join us uh, during our live stream. The, the bishop had said that we can have up to 10 people, so we want to make sure that we comply with that and everybody's socially distanced and, we, and, and all that. So anyway, look for more information on that in the coming weeks. all I have here, so let's get on with, let me switch back to, okay, now our scripture focus passage today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 19, and uh, I'll read it out. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. And now uh, let us join together in our call to worship. We wait with hope. For God's promises are sure. We wait with patience. For God's time is a mystery. Come and worship. And we will wait upon the Lord together. Our opening hymn today is We Gather Together, which can be found in your hymnals on page 131, and I will also put it on your screen so you can follow us at home. One moment, please, while I deal with some technical difficulties. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, that's better. All right. Let's uh, let's go forward here, and it looks like I'm getting a little bit better input. So I must have been a a problem with my microphone. So uh, thank you for bearing with us. I know it was kind of low uh, before, so hopefully this is much better. Okay. Transition back to there. Okay, here we go. And now I'd like to respond to 
some of your comments. I'm sure maybe some of them might be, I can't hear you, <laughs> so hopefully you can hear me now. I'm going to bring them up on the screen here. So actually, I'll. Okay. Marceline Brian Farquharson says, Good morning, God's loving people. Well, good morning, Marceline. It's so wonderful to have you uh, online with us. And we have Aseta. Uh, good morning, Pastor John and everyone. So, okay. So we've, uh, I think that's all we have for now. So I might check back later on and, and uh, greet you guys a little bit later as well. Okay, now let's go on to our prayer list. I'm going to do something a little bit different with our, care, with our prayer list. We are, um, the wonderful thing is that we're getting a nice, um, we're getting a lot of people submitting prayer requests for us. And uh, so we have, our list gets longer. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, after every prayer intention, we'll do uh, like our normal service here where we say, I say, um, um, Lord in your mercy, and then we'll say, hear our prayer. If you can say that at home. And then I'll say a prayer at the end. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually post this list so it's available to you online. And I'll send out an email message. And if you can, uh, if you'd like to be able to pray for the people on our list, you'll be able to connect through our website. Um, so we've, uh, we have a number of groups. We have a caring ministry that, that uh, prays for everybody on our list. And um, we'd like you to... Do you need to turn up your input on this mic? Okay. Oh, here we go. How about now? Uh, we'll get a, that's probably good, because everybody's turned up all the way and can barely get Okay. Okay, I think it's better. I see uh, the, 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 num the module here. Um, the, I can see the, uh, the feedback monitor um, is now showing more sound coming out. So, Okay, I, again, I am sorry about this. We're, uh, I don't know what the setting here was, was a little off. So. Okay, let's continue on with their prayer, their prayer ministry. For Lutu Carlson and family, we'd like to pray for complete recovery from COVID-19 and for Lotu and her son Moana uh, to be completely uh, cured and for safety for the family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Mosese Otukolu and Miyamoa, uh, Aseta's cousins, uh, who also have COVID-19, uh, we'd like to uh, pray for healing for that family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Vanessa Malamala's family, her aunts, her uncle, and cousins in Arizona, who are now recovering from COVID-19, we pray that for complete recovery for that family and that the rest of the family can keep healthy and safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For uh, Jim North, who is my daughter uh, Marissa's uncle, uh, he recently has been diagnosed with COVID-19, and uh, we pray for him uh, for for complete healing, uh, and that he's able to um, he's able to get to find healing and comfort, and that he's also able to um, uh, so that his his family also doesn't con contract it as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For my friend from California. Uh, Paul Keho, who's healing from recent surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For one of my great friends in California, uh, Lori Ramsey, who's been such a help and a guide to me in my, in my ministry, uh, she is fighting stage four colon cancer. Uh, so uh, we pray that for complete healing from that and that her, uh, her family it, uh, gets comfort uh, and energy and support in supporting Lori and all of her friends as well. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. For Dan and Barb Connor, uh, Dan is recovering from surgery and he's going through rehab uh, for the next month or so. Uh, we, he's also continuing immunotherapy treatment, so we pray for Dan uh, for complete healing and also for Barb uh, for comfort and assurance during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Leslie Fathman, who, Barb Newton's sister in Colorado, who's undergoing immunotherapy treatment, we pray for complete healing and, and also uh, comfort during this, this time for her and her family. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. For, for Jodine Bren, who is awaiting a lung transplant, uh, and also for her husband, Dan. And also just, I'd like to personally thank uh, Jodine for all of her, uh, just, she's been sharing what's been going on with her and it's been wonderful to, uh, I've been inspired by her, uh, by her faith journey. So we pray for them, uh, and that she, they, they can keep encouraged and that she finds treatment for, um, for, for her lung, uh, you know, for lung problems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we'd like to praise you for, um, for her friend, Crystal. Uh, Jodine had shared that she had a friend, Crystal, who was waiting for a donor uh, for a lung transplant. And uh, she's, Crystal's originally from Hawaii, so she's been separated from her family for a while. Well, um, praise the Lord, uh, a donor has come forward, so she's scheduled for surgery. So we pray that that surgery goes well and uh, that she'll be able to return home to her family soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For John Tomoso and family, uh, for the recent loss of their mother, and uh, we just pray for comfort and healing for that family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Pastor Amy and all the chaplains at Maui Memorial Hospital who are our, um, our eyes and ears and, and our prayer partners there, uh, when one of our members goes to the hospital, they're so good about visiting them and sharing our prayers with them. So we'd like to pray for their safety and for encouragement during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Scotty Schaefer's family, um, Scotty Schaefer passed away a few weeks ago after a long battle with cancer, and we'd like to pray for his family now as, as they're mourning his loss. Uh, and, and we pray for healing and comfort for that family and all of his friends as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Beverly Keneally, uh, for the recent loss of her husband, and we pray that she's able to find a place to live and an employment and she can get back on her feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Jeff McCullum, who's living in Thailand with the threat of having to leave his family business and his family behind uh, because of uncertainties in that government, we pray that he can stay there with his family and continue um, living the life he's living there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the Eckhoff family, Bill went to the Lord on July 8th, and we pray for Carol and Kristen and all the family as um, they're mourning the loss of Bill, and we pray for comfort and healing for that family uh, during this, this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Ofa Bakela, brother of Sione, for continued healing from COVID-19. Uh, we pray that he can soon get 100% back on his feet and be able to visit his brother, uh, Sione, here in Maui. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all the first responders and staff and all the people that are encountering um, uh, the public right now during this, uh, this pandemic, um, Lord, we pray for safety and protection that they, uh, as they support our community, that they can keep safe and free from, uh, from illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Kathy Tryon, uh, my friend with stage four cancer, uh, for her and her family at this time, as she healing for her and strength for her family and for her friends, particularly uh, Barb and my brother Greg. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Sandra Koala, who is now in hospice care after uh, suffering a brain aneurysm, we pray for her family during this time. Uh, as, as she's going through this, as they're going through this time with her, Lord, we pray that this moment, um, that we pray that if there is a possibility for healing, that it can happen with, with uh, Sandra. But we also pray for strength for her, for her family during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Heather Coffey, niece of Dave and Sherry Langeel, living in Colorado, as she lives alone and struggles with periods of anxiety, Lord, we pray that you can bolst up her her encouragement and, and courage during this time that you can keep her safe and all the people that are that are living alone and, and suffering fear and anxiety during this difficult time lord in your mercy hear our prayers for the hearn family for the passing of donna and grandson james uh, praise prayers for all of her their family for comfort and also for uh their friend her, uh, for carol mark who's uh, who's the friend of that family lord in your mercy Hear our prayers. 
for the Esper family for the passing of Carol. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Alexis Machonis, uh, Alexis is pregnant and considered high risk with her second child. Prayers for a healthy baby girl and a safe pregnancy and for her sister Monique Peterson, who's also pregnant, uh, pray for a healthy baby for her as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Linda Takahashi, who's home now, recovering uh, from, from treatment at the hospital, uh, Lord, we pray for a complete recovery for Linda and also for Les uh, that time as he's, at this time as he's taking care of her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Blake Pearson and Jamie Lozada, uh, Blake and Jamie are planning to come here in October uh, to get married. I shared, I think, before that uh, Blake has gone through uh, surgery, brain surgery, and he's recovering now, and he's feeling well. He's looking forward to his upcoming wedding. But we pray for a full recovery for Blake and that their, the success of their plans um, to get married here in October. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, as we lift up all of these prayers of all the people who have reached out to us uh, for prayers and support, Lord, we know that you hear all of these prayers and you take them to heart. Uh, you give us courage during these times as we face illness, we face the loss of loved ones, we face anxiety in these difficult times. We have plans that seem to, might, that, that seem to be at risk of, of changing and as we and go all of the things that are going on in our world today. Lord, we, we, we are able to get through all of this because we know that you are with us, you're beside us, you're in our hearts, your spirit fills us. Lord, we pray that your spirit will fill us as we pray for all of these people uh, today and that you fill their hearts with the, with the knowledge that you are with them and that we are all bounded together in love in the name of our Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. All right, let us join together now for our unison prayer, which can be found in your bulletins. I will put that on the screen so you will be able to join along at home. Holy God of mystery and miracles, reveal your presence to us as we gather in worship. Send your Holy Spirit to descend upon us and show us that despite our feelings of unworthiness, your Son has made us worthy to be called your adopted children. Raise our thoughts that we may reflect on your promises and trust with hope in promises yet to come. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, the first reading today is from Genesis 28, chap uh, verses 10 through 19. Oh, John. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Jacob left, left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. 
and he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30 and verses 36 through 43. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came in and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us join together for our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge, our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Right. Our next, um, our hymn of preparation today is Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, which can be found in your hymnals on page 402. And I will also bring it up here on the screen so you can follow along. In the
reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 15, which can be found, uh, the text could be found in your bulletins if you'd like to follow along. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to reveal, be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revelation of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not by its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For ho who, who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. Our anthem today is Spirit of the Living God, which I'll play for you now. Uh, this was done by a, a couple of students at uh, Claremont School of Theology, and I'll share it with you today. <laughs>
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Please join me in prayer. Lord, let the meditations of my mind and the intentions of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's been hard remaining confident and upbeat in the year 2020. If you had any mojo going into the year, you might be finding it hard to hold on to it now. Beyond the usual hardships we could be experiencing in a given year, the death of a close friend or loved one, health issues, broken friendships, uh, the end of romantic relationships, deaths, all the different worries of, of the state of affairs in the world, this year we're also facing an out of control global pandemic, economic recession, racism, growing unrest, and a toxic culture where people turn their frustrations on each other rather than confronting the problems at hand. Media outlets and social networking sites are not really helping the situation very much. Uh, because, and at times it seems like these two communication outlets seem to be morphing together into a kind of bullhorn of negativity. Every day we're inundated and with unfiltered utterances from leaders who have no idea how to lead or with videos of people behaving badly or violently or hatefully. With every argument and with every issue, we're invited by like thinkers to line up with the good guys to troll, demean, or cancel those we disagree with. So these things have been go were going on in my mind uh, over this week, and it's with this backdrop that I've looked at this chapter from Romans today, uh, from chapter 8 uh, in our reading, where Paul tells us that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains in anticipation. Paul reveals that what creation is anticipating, he reveals what that is in verses 18 and 19. All creation is anticipating us and what the Spirit can reveal through us about our relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul says, I believe that the present sufferings is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed in us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. So what is Paul talking about? All creation indeed seems to be awaiting something, uh, and, but many today think of that as something more like, uh, that anticipation is more like dread. Apocalyptic scenarios are envisioned more than utopian ideas of the future. But the very fact that apocalypse is portrayed as a bad thing is indicative of our mindset. Apocalypse comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which means a revelation. The early Christians used this term to indicate when God, will be when God will reveal the kingdom of heaven on earth. Over the last few weeks, we've been delving into this letter of Romans and noting that Paul is speaking at the, about the power of the Holy Spirit, about how that can transform our lives. And he offers his re readers a new way of understanding the times in which we are living. Paul tells us that our fears will not rule us when we give our lives to serving. Through Jesus Christ, God has given us a great get out of jail free pass. And we realize that we are not controlled by our and condemned by our failures, our selfishness, our mistakes. Paul tells us that in Romans, that in Romans chapter 8, verse 3 through 4, he tells us this with this, uh, with this quote. God condemned sin in the body by sending his own son to deal with sin in the same body as humans who are controlled by sin. He did this so that righteousness, the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now the way we live is based on the spirit, not on selfishness. We are now free from fixating our thoughts on death, despair, and decay. And through God's spirit, we can live in a place of joy and peace and love. We can focus on freeing the rest of the world as well. We look at all the bad things, the things happening in the news, we get discouraged. But we also realize that we live in the spirit and we are seeking signs of the spirit moving in this world. When we live in the spirit, we are living in the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, the kingdom of God is among you.
John Lewis passed away on Friday. And today I can think of no better example of kingdom living than the work of John Lewis, uh, especially the work he did to fight segregation. For the last 33 years, John Lewis was a congressman. And during that time, he received many rewards, honorary degrees, and accolades. But you may remember a time, or maybe have read about a time, when John Lewis received beatings and abuse for his efforts, not rewards. When John Lewis was a young protege of Martin Luther King, he and others faced down hatred and oppression with their bodies, doing what Jesus instructed us to do, turn the other cheek. John Lewis was the son of sharecroppers and he grew up in a deeply segregated Alabama. He met Rosa Parks when he was 17 and Martin Luther King when he was 18. They all, in a sense, grew up in the same area, the neighborhood. He was trained in nonviolent protest by the Reverend James Lawson, uh, who is still a pastor emeritus at Holman United Methodist Church in Los Angeles. And he was one of the original Freedom Riders. And the Freedom Riders were black and white students who defied Jim Crow segregation laws on buses, at lunch counters, and in public restrooms by merely being together. That was too much for people that couldn't stand the sight of that. During those rides, John Lewis was beaten unconscious by racist segregationists on multiple occasions. He was jailed 40 times. John Lewis had his skull cracked open by state troopers as he walked next to Martin Luther King across Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in 1965. And they were marching from Selma to the state capital of Montgomery to highlight their struggle against segregation and inequality. Now with this great story, we forget one thing, and then it's not talked about very often, but John Lewis and Martin Luther King and all those in the struggle got their courage by their faith that the Spirit was leading them to share Dr. King's prophetic message and vision of hope and justice. In 2004, with the magazine Religion, in the magazine Religion and Ethics, John Lewis gave an interview, and in this interview he said that his work, he said this about his work in the civil rights movement. I'm deeply concerned that many people today fail to recognize that the movement was built on deep-seated religious convictions and the movement grew out of a sense of faith, faith in God and faith in one's fellow human beings. Martin Luther King had a major impact on my search for truth. I felt like he was doing the work of the master, that he was saying in effect that our hands, our feet, our minds must be the hands, the feet, and mind of God Almighty. John Lewis, in other words, lived according to the Spirit. He confidently confronted hatred and the evil of racism with the evidence of a man who knew that God was with him. The confidence. All creation is waiting for people like John Lewis and like you and me who choose to eschew our sinful natures to decide to be the hands, the feet, the minds of God. This is what all Christians are called to do. We are all God's heirs through our faith in Christ's good news. We are fighting for more than ourselves. We are fighting for all of creation, as Paul says today. When we see hatred, we don't respond with hatred because we know that Christ has saved us from hatred. We respond with the mercy for the hater. John Lewis' witness was so powerful that a, K a former KKK member who had beaten him during the bus boycott, Elwin Wilson, publicly apologized to him 48 years later on national television. And John Lewis forgave him and Wilson said, all I can say is that it has bothered me for years, all the bad stuff I've done. And I found out that there's no way I can be saved and get to heaven and still not like blacks. Among other great things he had done, John Lewis helped save this man's soul. Paul says that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And in verse 19, creation waits with breathless anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Yes, we're looking forward to the day when Christ returns, but we're not meant to sit in a state of, amended, of, of suspended animation. We have the Spirit of God that leads us forward. And 
if you have trouble feeling that spirit of God, I invite you to go to God and ask God for that spirit. Pray for, it, for that spirit to come upon you because that is what the world needs today. We are called to make the kingdom of God available to more people. Before that time comes, we have work to do because the kingdom of God is not an exclusive country club for the saved. It is for all creation. We cannot let bad news, cynicism, and threats stop us. We can spread love today. We can confront hatred today. We, because we do not live by the bounds and the constrictions of this sinful world, we can do many things. We are children of an all-powerful God, and with his spirit, in our need, we can cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. Our closing hymn today is God Be With You Till We Meet Again, which can be found on 72 of your hymnal, and I'll put this here on the screen so you can follow along. And now, uh, if you join with us together in our circle of ohana as we sing the Hawaii Aloha. I'm going to adjust the camera so you can. Sorry about that. Okay. There we are. Just out of the room. There we go.
May patience pave our path. May hope comfort our world and may love guide our lives. Go with patience, hope, and love in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Aloha, everybody. Have a wonderful week. God bless. Thank you.